Okay, so my fourth big trend, uh, now focus, moving a little bit from the uh, past towards current, is the fall in commodity prices and the slowdown in the global economy, most particularly in China. Uh, the commodity prices started to rise in about 2002. And I emphasize that because it was actually about seven years after the surge in economic growth started, which should tell you that the surge in growth in Africa was not fundamentally about commodity prices because it actually started when commodity prices were falling. Commodity prices certainly helped in many countries, um, uh, particularly the oil exporters and countries that are dependent on a single commodity like iron ore or copper. And since 2002, that has certainly been part of the rise in economic growth, but, but far from all of it. Commodity prices started to fall uh, a couple of years, two years ago uh, now, and in some cases, uh, obviously oil, but also copper, uh, iron ore, uh, and others, uh, the prices have fallen quite quite sharply, and this is creating some real issues for, uh, for a number of countries. With, corresponding with the fall in commodity prices is China's uh, slowdown, uh, and uh, that has big impacts for some countries in Africa that are particularly strongly engaged with China. Again, not everywhere, but with, uh, but with many. China's slowdown is permanent. Uh, it has to do uh, uh, with every country's growth slows down as incomes grow. It has to do with uh, the investment. Uh, their capital stock is much larger than it used to be, so the rate of return on new investment is falling. It has to do with demographic shifts as they age. It has to do with the fact that, uh, that uh, the, the movement of workers from the rural areas to the, to the coastal areas can't continue because most people have moved. And a lot of the big drivers behind China's growth have shifted, uh, in, and, and the economy is a very different structure. Uh, and it's not going to go back to 10 percent growth or even 8 percent growth. It can be sustained at 6 percent growth, which is pretty high uh, for a while, but it's not changing back. I actually suspect that in the next 10 years, uh, the biggest emerging market for the world will become India rather than China. India will become more populous than China in about five or six years and is still growing, is now growing faster than China. So there's big shifts going on in terms of global markets that are going to affect uh, uh, African countries, uh, and uh, the paradigms of the last few years aren't going to last. And this drop in commodity prices and the slowdown with China are related to each other. But again, these are affecting countries quite differently. And now you can look at figure two, which I skipped over, uh, which is, comes from the IMF's regional economic outlook, which we're going to talk about uh, on Thursday. Uh, and four, four groups of countries, these are different, <laughs> slightly different groups than, than in figure one, um, but it shows the IMF's projected growth rates um, for, four different, uh, for three different groups and then one individual country. Oil importing countries is the blue line on the top, all of sub-Saharan Africa, the red line, the oil exporting countries are green, and then on the bottom, uh, South Africa, uh, which stands out for its poor performance and its importance going forward. The oil, I'll come to South Africa in a second, the oil exporting countries are in trouble, uh, both because oil prices are down and because all of them, with the exception of Nigeria, are not democracies. It's a combination, it's not just the oil. Oil exporting goes along with poor governance. Uh, it's one of the strongest trends that we see, frankly, around the world. Nigeria is struggling to break out of that, of that trap, but they're not quite out yet. But uh, the poor performance here is, 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 uh, comes from both the fact of the dependence on oil and with that, these are relatively poorly governed countries. And you can see the outlook, is, the, the drop in growth has been pretty sharp and the outlook is not, uh, is not so great. By contrast, the oil importing countries, which are largely uh, the uh, countries that, uh, that are importing and therefore benefiting from the drop in oil prices, uh, and especially those that are not concentrated in one single commodity, growth rates look pretty good. So in Mozambique, in Ethiopia, in, in, in Rwanda, in, um, uh, in Tanzania, um, uh, in Namibia, growth rates still look pretty good going forward. Uh, and so again, as we look forward, I hear people saying, well, commodity prices are falling and that's really going to you know, tank sub-Saharan Africa. Well, wrong. It's going to tank, it's going to uh, adversely affect several countries, but other countries it's actually benefiting. Ivory Cote d'Ivoire is a really good example where the fall in oil prices is helping them on the import side, and cocoa prices are actually going up, and they have a, a, a new and, and, and at the moment fairly vibrant democracy, and so the outlook for, for Cote d'Ivoire looks pretty good. So again, you've got to kind of look through the different kinds of trends. Now, 
a couple things going forward, and then I will uh, draw to a close. 